welcome everybody once again to Face the Facts. I am Nick Face, virtually with you. Uh, we have Phil Healy, uh, the program coordinator from NorCam Studios that is here on today's episode. And Tom is in another planet. So Tom is not here with us today. But we're here to talk with you today about some updates around the NBA. We have the Bruins playoff series going on. We have the baseball trade deadline coming up. And we'll also get a chance to talk a little bit about our feelings a little bit and our beliefs towards what some of these players and athletes have done with this boycott this week in our country. So first of all, welcome in, Phil. I love your background. Hey, thank you. I do too. I, I love your, uh, uh, I love that World picture Series of Fenway. Oh, Fenway, sorry. 2013, that was the game where, I think it was game six, Shane Victorino hit that Grand Slam. Oh, that was yeah. a heck of a series. It was, and Koji. Uh, Koji was our closer. He struck out the ever. final batter. He's yeah, Mister Eight Pitch Closer, eight pitches an inning, no stress. Loved it. No, he was fantastic. I mean, he was, and he was like, what was it, eighty five? He was, like <laughs> he was, he was, he was up there, but he He's was great. He was a magician. He was, and he helped us. Uh, like, like you said, he was no stress free. He was very. Once you got to Koji, you knew, and he, uh, they ran him into the ground. And, and he wasn't even supposed playoffs. to be the closer from that 2013 team. It was That's the, right. It was number four up. That's right. It wasn't like in August he became something the de facto. Yeah, it was like late, that. really he late. He just had an amazing year, and they just said, all right, you close. Yeah. And my favorite closer I've seen, even better, I thought he had better stuff than Papelbon. Uh, Papelbon he, was he's very up there too, but Koji, yeah. Koji had that extra level excitement to him. And both uh, of them Brennan, struck out a Brennan, final batter to win the World yeah, Series. Both of them, yeah. He struck out um, uh, what the heck is his name? Uh, Ka Matt Carpenter from the Cardinals. Matt oh, Carpenter man. From the Cardinals. But we're not here to talk about Koji. Yeah, so sure. We want to talk about Koji. That's I could all day. Yeah, I could too. So we will talk about first because Phil is our we like to call him our de facto basketball expert. Let's talk about the Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers series. Let's lead off with that. So just overall take on what your overall opinions were with that series for the Celtics. I mean, the Seas, uh, they swept them in four games. And because you're not in that bubble, uh, you, you probably well, – you have seen more sweeps because it seems like – and I know we talked about this in earlier shows or the first wave of our uh, virtual shows. Right. Because they're all in a bubble, it seems like it's going to be uh, – a lot of things are – I mean, advantages of home, uh, home court are – nullified and they're just you know really teams are no just advantage going, from yeah no problem. advantage and it, it's well the advantage i would argue the advantage goes to the lower seated team yeah because there's no you're, you're on equal footing and you have your virtual fans but uh that's really nothing worth mentioning really um and you have they're pumping in fake crowd noise or whatever and that's kind well, of very fake the whole thing it's is very bizarre i mean some of it is like good pablum for uh like watching i guess but even so, you're getting okay games, but the first round is kind of sloppy enough. So this series wasn't that much different. You had some decent games from uh, Kemba seemed to keep ascending for each game, and I think he's going to be a lot better. You lost Gordon Haywood at the end of the first game. Haywood's going to be a tough, tough loss for this team. It's going to be. I mean, he's they're really managing. starting to play good basketball and seemed like he yeah. was healthy. So. Yeah, this year he um, – I mean, getting into the playoffs, he was pretty good. He was pretty good. He was, he was at like the stage you probably thought he was going to be when you first got him. Yeah, so, I would agree on that. I would agree. It seemed like he was coming into his own. Yeah, and they, uh, but they seemed to work around it. And I mean, the, the 76ers didn't have Ben Simmons. They were kind of uh, Embiid, although he got like almost 30 a night, is kind of lackluster in a lot of ways. And I like Embiid. I think he's very talented. I think if he could take over a game easily. Uh, and he gets a lot of calls, whether they're justified or not. He's a big guy, and he can make things work. But uh, the Sixers kind of uh, – they gave you they gave you something. They gave you some effort, and they gave you some tight games, like I think game two, even game four to a degree. But uh, – oh, no, not game two. I'm sorry. Uh, game three. I would argue game, game one, three. three a little bit closer. Four. Yeah. Two was kind of a blowout, a blowout towards – I mean, they won by like 20-something. And they Celtics had like a firm hand on that, and the third uh, game I believe uh, the Sixers had like a like either they're up a, a possession or two, but then the Celtics just rattled off like a ten nothing run, 
and the, to close it out. And then game four, I think they won by, I think, six. Yeah. But it, it, they were up by effort. like – It was an effort. But they were up by I like 14. It was kind of – expected that the Celtics were going to win that series so yeah especially with even with Ben Simmons I think the Seas were going to win it I think they would too they were more talented but the thing that I think really stood out to me from this series and I'm going to be honest with you I didn't watch too too much of it it's hard for me right now to honestly watch sports and we'll get into that in a little bit I'm following it but I'm not I'm not having that same kind of passion that I've had for so much of my life in sports um, but I thought Al Horford, uh, just being like an absolute no show and getting just obliviated by his former team was kind of comical, kind of comical. Yeah. He had some moments, but he really wasn't, I mean, the whole team, the, the six are just, were, are just kind of a collection of what are we doing? I mean, that's, yeah, I agree. that's kind of what it is. And the, their coach got fired the day after. Rep Brown is fired. Yep. And uh, Cedric Maxwell always has is always great if you listen to him on the radio with him and um, uh, Grandy. Yep, Sean Grandy. Yeah. Uh, Ma- I believe it was at the end. Uh, yeah, it was at the end of the fourth game. I was actually listening to part of the fourth quarter while driving, and had, when they were up by fourteen, the seeds were up by fourteen, and I think it was like six or seven minutes left. Max made a joke at uh, Philadelphia timeout, like Brett Brown addressing his team. Well, it was a pleasure to coach you all. Yeah. And it, it was, I mean, he knew, right. everyone knew. I mean, it's just yeah. like Brett Brown, nice enough guy. I think he's a New England guy. He, I think he uh, coached uh, He's Maine going to still college. be doing something within the organization with oh, really? Philadelphia. So he's just not coaching next That's year. That's weird. Basically, it's weird. That, I mean, just get him out like of there. Getting demoted, you know? I, yeah. I don't know if I could ever do something like that. Also, you got you know if you don't want his stink of coaching or don't want that sent in the organization, just throw him out. I mean, right. as much you know, as much as it's very nice that they're demoting him, it might actually be worse off for him because maybe he could do better somewhere else. I don't know, but you this team know. was sometimes it, it, yeah. it's very difficult as we've seen to coach a group of athletes that yeah. have a lot of baggage to them or have a lot of ego to them. I mean, we've seen it over I mean, the years. Sure. Some teams are a dream to coach. Some aren't. Yeah, and maybe, you know, I mean, honestly, I mean, that's their job. As a coach, that's your job. I mean, and we give uh, players a lot of guff. Yeah, it's their job well, to, to do whatever, to, yeah. ass- to assess the situation and try to motivate, do whatever they can to make sure they get, you know, they get out of the way of, right. of, of progress. And on a, uh, honestly, last year, uh, they were, uh, you know, the 76ers were a bucket away from – beating the Raptors on their floor in the second round and going to the third round. And I think beating – they probably would have represented the East, and they might have actually won something. They were that good, and they were rolling in a way. I mean, they – I think they gave the Raptors their their biggest challenge, to be honest. Not Golden State, but although well, Golden State you know, did give them something. Speaking of Raptors, I mean, that's who the Celtics will play next in their next round, which yep. was supposed to start last um, night. Thursday, yeah. Night, whatever it was. Thursday at 6.30, I think it was supposed to, yeah. So that will transition us into the next domino. And that was the announcement on Wednesday evening that started with the Milwaukee Bucks with this shooting of Jacob, uh, what's his name? Jacob, Jacob Blake, I believe. Jacob Blake, who was... Shot seven times in the shot back. Shot seven times in the back, pulled a knife on a cop, was wanted for sexual assault and with all the all this kind of stuff and everything. Oh, I don't even know if and that's true. I don't know if that's verified. I, it's the whole thing to me is just it's it's awful. Like I get it. I get people are upset in this country, and I get that they're frustrated. But Phil, I think you'll agree with me on this. If you don't, that's fine. That's why this is face to facts. You can have your own opinions on this show, but. If I look a little worn down and tired today, it's because I am absolutely disgusted with not only our country right now, but the whole landscape of professional sports. Here's why. If I am to bring a boycott and a some sort of making a statement for my organization to NORCAM to wherever else that I go and represent, Phil, so what happens to us? As far as if we put up a stink and boycott and say, no, we're not going to go and do our job. We're not going to work. We're not going to do this. What happens? 
I think you're trying to make a false equivalency to these people who are in entertainment. And if they, mm -hmm. have, they have a megaphone and they feel their best way to get it out there is to kind of stop playing a, a game, a, a children's game, of which they've all professed that they've loved. And there's nothing wrong with the game itself and or uh, the playing of it. And you can have, I mean, we love, we talk about it all the time, but we also know that it's just that, a game. It is a game. So, but it's not like they're talking about like they're talking as firefighters or they're talking as uh, police officers or, yeah, or, EMT, or doctors or EMT or, or doctors. That's right. not, and, and I'm sure they would, you know, they'd be the first to say like, oh, this is not, you know, the more important thing is we have a voice, we have a megaphone. This is the, and this is the instrument we're using to the voice our uh, discern, or I'm sorry, my, our uh, distaste for the situation and their concern. But uh, yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying. If we, we don't have that luxury, sure. No, we don't. But we also don't, but we also don't, we're also not, no one gives a, a crap about what we say. And I don't mean that flippantly. I mean that I in the sense where you, we're, we're not. We're Joe Schmoes. Yeah. We're Joe not, Schmoes. We, we, we are average, normal, working hard, uh, middle class people that try to make a living and do the best thing that we can for our families, our communities, and whatnot. Well, you're taking a lot of assumption on me. Uh, well, but a lot of good no, there, no, it's a, yeah, a just, being, good. just being uh, self-deprecating. But uh, yeah, I understand what you're saying, and I don't. Uh, but yeah, again, please feel free to finish uh, your point. I'm sorry. I mean, to jump on. So my thing here is, at least for my organization, if I went down, say Monday, uh, Wednesday morning, when all this you know nonsense was going on, and I don't mean the nonsense of the whole situations that arise. I know what you mean. The, boy, the boycott. Stuff. I mean the boycotting from stuff. I don't have a business anymore. I have no money to support myself, my family, my employees. I lose a community. I lose a district. I lose my families. I lose my kids' trust. My, my life is over. It's over. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when you, I mean, this is, you know, I, I knew this is the road you're going down, and I understand what you're saying. So uh, that's why if I look but, a little tired and if I look a little not myself, it's because this has been a lot for me to process this week. This year has just been too much to have to kind of, you know, think about and process and move forward with. You know, there's a lot, a lot of anger and there's a lot of hate and there's a lot of second guessing and questioning that so many people have right now in this world. Sure. And, they, and it's sad. It's very sad. The state that we're in scares the hell out of me. And the mental health of people is alarming to me too, because now, at least for what I've seen for some things, like if my programs or, or stuff, we have these little kids who are supposed to look up to these professional athletes and idolize them and be their heroes. Can I do that anymore? Well, do you think, well, here's my question to that then. Do you think this this makes them uh, more of a hero or less of a hero? In honesty, and I don't mean because because they're not in the same no, situation. I, I know what you mean, and I'm having a very tough time even giving an answer with that. And usually, I I I, I I'm not somebody that's wishy washy. I usually, if I have no, an it's, opinion, it's it's okay. I mean, it's not. No I like one, to have my opinion. Yeah, but I, I mean, guess, it's not. I don't. You don't need to I have don't a, feel right as a citizen right now, as a business owner, as a community leader by saying what the professional athletes are doing is right. And the reason why I'm saying that is because granted, they're professional athletes. They have an audience, they have, you know, a microphone, they have whatever they can do. I don't think it's right to put that into their physical games. If they want to go make a charity and go do something off the court or off the ice or off the field in their own time, I think that is perfectly fine. But when you bring that baggage into your workplace, that's where my issue is because it's not fair for everybody in this country. These million dollar professional, sorry, spoiled brats, most of them are getting away with this because they can. Well, I don't As normal citizens. Sure. We I, can't get away with that. Well, no, we could, we could do whatever we'd like. And it, all depends, it all depends on the consequences. That, there will be that consequences for our action. But, That's exactly but, right, Phil. Sure, sure. But to, to answer these questions like, I mean, are they heroes or are they not? I and mean, the whole point is they're men. They are. Uh, they're, they're white, black, and, and Asian. And uh, they're, 
it, or uh, South American uh, and a, uh, European. So there, these are all these men, and they're uh, predominantly black league, where they had they feel they need to, nay, they should say something and be there because they have this huge audience that they, they can speak to. And if yeah. they believe in something, which is, you know, there is a problem. There is a problem. It's valid. It's more, yes, than it a, is. more than yeah. apparent. Yeah. And it's more than apparent that the fans of uh, racism and, uh, diver and uh, division are being flamed, or the, the flames of uh, racism and uh, division are being fanned by mm -hmm. uh, people who, uh, crazies, on the right and yep. people who literally will go to peaceful protests and murder people because they feel like they, uh, because they, they're indoctrinated in some weird way. And I, listen, I, listen, I understand from a working class point of view, you can yep. see this as being very selfish and being self-centered, but, but that doesn't change anything that what they're standing for. Just, and this is you the thing. Just, point, well, yeah. no. And I, listen, Nick, I don't, uh, I, I think it's easy for us to judge them in the sense like, well, it must be nice for them. And it's like, yeah, of course. And especially during the time when, you know, you have a pandemic going on. And that's the thing, too, because they and you say, you know, they should make a charity or do whatever. But they can't. They're in a bubble. And that's the thing. Like, they can't move. They can't leave their facility. And I understand. And I agree with you. Like, it's tough. Like, and, you know, I have a I'm lucky. I have a decent life. Uh, my, I, my I have good people I work with, good people I, I talk to. Yep. Uh, I'm able to be on the show with you and talk about things that we are passionate about sure. uh, that are enter entertainment based and it's great. And this is, and, you know, and they are fighting for that same right for everyone to have that sort of, because you know what, it's not, they're not necessarily just talking about them. They're talking about the working class kids who maybe won't be, you know, if, if something happens, you know, whether, you know, they are listening to an officer or not, you know, something happens. And, you know, these are discussions that need to be had. And um, I thank you for bringing it up. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. I think you're, you know. I we thought all it have... was appropriate. And, and oh, I sure. think that we can both see that we both question a lot of the stuff that, that's here. And what's good about it is we're having a nice discussion about it. There's no hatred. There's no, um, there's no wrong in this. There's no wrong. Well, I think it's, it's just a matter of empathy. It's a it's, good discussion because... All, I think, at least in my eyes, the only thing that I'm trying to do is to lead, represent my communities, my kids and stuff that we do stuff with in the best way we can. And the, the biggest dilemma I have, like I just said with you, is how can I tell a child to look up to some of these athletes, like I said over the years, because they idolize them, they think that they're heroes, yeah. when at the end of the day, are they really doing the right things that these kids should be looking up to and stuff? Well, it's, I mean, I, I it's think very wishy washy. No, I mean, and I, I see where you're coming from, but I think you can. I think you can tell them. For I the, hope we can, Phil. I do. No, I, 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 I think you, I, I think you can, and I think even whether you think this is too too much or they're not in the, you know, you want to pick. I don't care for this phrasing, and I think it's kind of belittling the people who have an opinion, and just because they're in a different profession, they shouldn't. But it all depends on the scope of which they have their opinion. But this opinion or this phrasing, stay in your lane. And I don't think that applies necessarily here because, you know, they're no, human beings. And it's about, but I think this is something where I think people have that thought, like, oh, they should just, you know, do their thing. But no, I mean, they're, they're, they're heroes in the sense that, like, we need to talk about this. People need to talk about it. Like, just because we're athletes doesn't mean we don't see what's going on. And we want young people to understand that it's okay to talk to people about this and it's okay to, to talk and, and, you know, understand someone who isn't you yep. uh, has an, has an opinion on something, but also might not have as good a life as you, be it as if their skin is yeah. different, the yeah, race I or, feel, or economically. Part, yeah. Just like you. I mean, I feel pretty lucky, you know, my luck's not, not to sound offensive when I say it, it's been pretty, pretty crappy this year. Um, but I, you know, oh, no, I don't think it's to have a great mother and father, a uh, great brother, you know, have clothes on my back yeah. and support myself, have a great business that is represented in a lot of places and communities, um, good support system, good staff, um, some good family. I mean, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. not going to name names. Sorry. No, but, you can. Um, 
Uh, you know who you are. No. Yeah, exactly. They'll be <laughs> in the credits. Everybody's watching. Uh, some good friends, you know who you are. No. Um, mm. And most importantly, it's the support system. And I think yeah. that we have to support each other here through this. Nobody is wrong in their opinions on this. It's good to have opinions. It's I think it's I think making, I, I, it's trying to make those opinions into matters that can make us progress better in this world. Yeah, I, I think we got to be careful about like because not every opinion is created equally. And I think no, it, not, it more or less. Right, I think not. it's like what we're doing here. Like whether we full, we don't fully agree with each other, but we can always talk about it. And we're at a great, we're at a good place where we can say to each other, like, you know, I, I don't think that's, you, we, I could say to you, you can say to me, like, well, this is where I'm coming from with this. And then we could just kind of meet somewhere where we know as human beings that the empathy is there and the light for each other, the, the kind of the flames of, um, uh, of humanity, whether, you, I mean, humanity can be pretty um, horrible, but also can be pretty great. It's that spectrum, just like anything else. But I think, you know, be careful because sometimes someone's opinion is that is based in hate. And sometimes yes, that's, are, and I've seen I mean, that I've seen that too much in this past year. Yeah. You know, who are you to say this is what we should or should not be doing? Like this flu vaccine that these kids are supposed to get mandatory if they go back for school. Yeah. Who who are you to tell my child what they can and cannot do? Well, it's that it's a weird a right of a parent in my eyes. But. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird because that's also a thing where uh, the that is such a weird thing. And, and I, you know, I got my, when I had a, I had a kid last year and right before we were told to, you know, get, uh, you, you know, get shots because yep. a kid immunity isn't, is obviously isn't developed. Right. So it's that, that same kind of thinking process is, is put out there. So, I mean, it just, I mean, to me, I don't necessarily share that uh, same feeling regarding like, I understand where parents are coming from and other people are coming from where, they feel like they shouldn't be told how to do it, but sometimes we're told to do stuff all the time. That's I mean, look at the betterment. mask. I mean, masks are pretty much mandatory anyway. Well, yeah, that's. But I, I choose to wear my mask, um, whatever you do with yours, um, mm. because I don't want to get sick. I yeah. want to follow the rules. I want the world to get better. And I think that that's one of the ways that hopefully we can get better from. I hope. Yeah. And I, I think the flu thing is just kind of like they want to make sure. It's tough because it's so crappy in a sense where kids in school, they don't know if they have something or don't. And like, it could be something else. could be COVID. I don't know. It's a whole weird, but hey, man, much love. Well, from I'm glad that we were able to have the talk about this because oh, it's been course. something that I think deserve the right recognition from. Um, and you can't escape it in a good way. You can't. You can't. You know, I know a lot of friends of mine and some family like, I'm done with sports. I'm not yeah. watching anymore. Like they're bringing this and I'm hearing it. Well, I mean, a lot. and sports have been such a big part of my life. And yeah. I no, can I understand. Mean, I can understand both sides of the I know, thing. I know, man. And I, I apologize. Yeah. I know I'm that guy. I obviously have a little long hair. So obviously I'll be that hippy dippy guy. But uh, no, but it's, I, I think, and people, if they don't want to do it, they, it's fine. They can tune out. And that's they their call. And that's what, hey, that's what it's, it's there for. Choice. It's yeah. their choice. If you want to watch, great. If you don't want to watch, yeah. Go watch uh, our reruns of The Office or whatever the heck you yeah, want to do. You have so, plenty of options. Yeah, you got plenty of options to do. But uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm with them. I don't I don't begrudge them, and I think they're doing the great thing. And the Kenny Smith thing, I don't know what your feelings on that. That, was, that, was, that was neat. I mean, that, he that was pretty powerful. Like them too. I mean, walking yeah. off the studio from his set from everything. Like I get it. I totally yeah. get his stance on that and everything. Um, the good part is it looks like basketball will return. We just don't know officially when. Yeah. Um, and then we have hockey that has been postponed for the last two days. It'll be postponed tonight as well. All right. Or Friday. Now they know when we're taping the show. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um, and then hopefully the Bruins can resume. Um, this is a good segue for the Bruins. They'll resume on Sunday. And it's a good chance to talk about that series now, too. Now, we don't have Tom here, our typical expert, but that's yeah. okay. We will both talk about it a little bit here with you. So right now, the Bruins are down in their series two games to one. The Bruins had a great first game. Uh, they were able to get a nice victory. I believe it ended up being four to three, a little bit too close for comfort, but pretty, yeah. Bruins pretty much dominated that first game. The second game ended up going into overtime, and the Lightning ended up winning 
I want it was to like say three to two, four to three, or oh, three four to three, two, I think. something like that. I think the first game was three to two. And I think the second game was four to three. I think you might be right. Yeah, you're yeah. right, Phil. That's exactly right. And um, see, now you are the hot. So I can't. I have uh, to. I got to pick up the slack. The and then they just got their butts kicked in game three. That was just a teeth pounded in uh, seven to one loss right there. I I didn't believe it when I saw it, man. I couldn't either. I actually. Maybe I'm the reason why they lost. Um, I was at a conference at night with um, some families, and mm. I didn't get done till about nine o'clock. And I checked uh-huh. the score, and it was four to one. And I was like, "Well, don't have to watch that when I go home." <laughs> so, there you go. I think that the, they need to get back to their game one uh, physicality. I think that the Lightning have physically beat the Bruins down the past two games. I do. Um, There's been some luck involved on the Lightning's end too. There's been some tricky bounces and some weird deflects that have gone in. I don't want to super overreact to that seven to one loss because everybody's entitled to a bad game. I get it. But the thing that I have to caution here is that you don't have Tuka Rask. And as much as he's such a polarizing figure, an athlete in this city with uh, especially the Bruins, sorry, folks, he's missed. Like, I know we said on the show that we believe in Halak and everything, but. I think game three showed you, yeah. You, you're missing your Vesna Trophy goaltender. That is Rask. He's been there. He's done that. Um, you're seeing a 35-year-old Halak can't really play these back-to-backs. I mean, he's just older. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Game three was they a bad back-to-back. Back that's back. right. The schedule just doesn't favor the Bruins, and I'm not no. here to whine and complain. <laughs> it is what it is. And I didn't particularly like Bruce Cassidy's post-game rec- uh, remarks after that 7-1 loss. About oh, why? What did he say? In the way. Oh. oh, we had to play back-to-back. Shut up and play. Like it's the playoffs. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, what was? Because I don't want to hear an excuse. I don't want to hear an excuse. Well, what was? I want to see them get out of the ice sure. and play hard. Well, what was the? I mean, there were a lot of complaints I remember about the refing, more so than usual about this game. And your own were like, what did you think? Oh, you didn't I see most. They of it, were. Yeah. I thought it was just an unfortunate placement on where they were. Um, yeah. I think that one just kind of got in the way where a ref was deflected and it counted as a goal and. I think Halak got screened on the play. Halak's been screened on probably about 60% of the goals that have gone in in this series. But they don't call that, really. They right? don't. They don't yeah. No, they don't. That's the playoffs. That. It's just it, it's one of those things. Yeah. What I am terribly concerned about is if Halak can't respond back, that backup that they have, Dan Vlazer, see you later. I can put my <laughs> dog in the net and he'd do better. Oh. Well, how, what kind of net. dog is it? A small cockapoo. Well, maybe yeah. he's actually sleeping right now. If it can book. skate, then I think, you know, put it in. I mean, he's like Air Bud. I mean, he's just, <laughs> he, had, he might take a nap in the net, but I mean, he might still be able to block the puck. Be better. Yeah. Scrub. I mean, Phil, he, this guy that was in net never had one ounce of NHL experience. He has not played a real NHL game. Did they take Halak out? Yeah, they did. They pulled oh, him out to four to one. Yeah, they pulled yeah. him. And, you know, rightfully so, rest him up. So he's yeah. getting gets ready for this next uh, pivotal game four now. I am calling game four a must win. It is very oh, difficult yeah. to come back and win in a series when you're down three games to one. So the Brewers need to tie this up. And hopefully, I mean, I thought this series was going to go six or seven games myself. It's two of the best teams in hockey. I get it. Yeah. So I still, I still give the Bruins. Uh, I'm not losing faith in them. I'm not. But if you have another performance like you did in either game two or three without any adjustments being made, Bruins are going home. And it's going to be sad because I truly do feel after this point, if the Bruins do go home, then the team is going to get dismailed. Then Chara retires. And, yeah. And, and they have to figure out Bergeron and Martian and Krejci and whether Rask comes back or not. I mean, that's an unknown too. Yeah, I think you're, I think you're right. I think things get disassembled. Because I think Char's gone. Do you think he's gone? Char can't even move. Up. Char's becoming a liability. Yeah, that's what I keep hearing. That he, liability. Well, they kept seven defensemen for the last game, and he's kind of like. Yeah, old man River. Yeah, I mean, it, it. He's given us quite a bit. I mean, if you think about it, this this group of Bruins, you've been to three Stanley Cups. You almost you won one. You almost won two. Yep. Um. You. I mean, I guess. I mean, against Chicago, 
game six, they got two goals in the last, like, yep. minute. But I mean, that's pretty good. I mean, I'll take it. You know what I mean? Yep. I'm not even I'm the biggest Bruins guy. I mean, I, I, I would love to see Bergeron specifically before he retires get one more. Just yep. one more. That would be great. Because if there's one athlete in this city that I would say to follow and to root for and to just – to get as much paraphernalia that you'd like, whether it's cards or posters yeah. or shirts, it's Bergeron. He's been the longest tenured um, Boston athlete now. Yeah, and he uh, is the only team Bruins he's been a part of, right? I think he's been a Bruin since 2005 now. Wow. And he was drafted as a Bruin, right? He was drafted as a Bruin. Wow, that's crazy. Pretty crazy stuff right yeah. there. Um, so, again, we're looking forward. That series should pick up Sunday night. Let's hope the Bruins get that victory. That and hopefully, uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, the bright side of the po postponement is, you know, you got Halak has got like three, four days of rest. Yeah. And I think that that I think they'll respond well. The adjustments got to be made. I'm mm. sure that they're going to be adding in some players. Uh, one player I'm a big advocate for of getting into the lineup is Jacob Stutica. He needs to be in on either the third line or wherever he can fit. They didn't have Sean Corrali for that last game. Uh, they did not have Connor Clifton. He needs to return on D and tell John Moore and Liaison to exit stage right. Um, so those are my hopes right there. Those are nice. my hopes. So and I, I didn't even around. give you uh, my take on Toronto versus uh, the Seas. I think the Seas can take yeah, it on six. Didn't. That's right, as we got into our talk about uh, it's all boys, good. Go ahead. Yeah, go right ahead. No, it's ahead. all good. I think I think the Seeds can take it in, in six games. They do. Okay. I could I could see them doing it in less possibly, but you know, Toronto's not a bad team. They're a deep oh. team. They have a good bench. Uh, Their coach uh, just won Coach of the Year, right? Nick, he did. Uh, he's actually he's great. He is yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, despite like I mean, you could you make the argument like oh they had Kawhi last year and it's like yeah that's true, but and uh, I don't know, but they did go pretty far. They did. They, yep. Yeah. I mean, they, they won it. I mean, they, uh, but also you have uh, Siakam is a really great player. I think this is his second year or third year, but Siakam is kind of the unsung uh, hero there. I think he's coming into his own. He's he's been performing great, uh, but I think the Seas can do it. I think if the Seas go at it because there's no real Toronto isn't isn't that big. I think they're big, a little bigger because the Seas are are tinier, but they're longer. I think. And I think the Seas can, you know, they can take it. I would be surprised yeah. if they don't make it out of the Toronto series. I would be surprised. I yeah. Think, I don't I, think I, it's going to be Bucks and Celtics to get to the finals. I think it, I, you might be looking at Bucks and Miami. Miami's pretty good. And Butler's Miami playing well. And they can uh, – Miami does a thing where they shoot the three incredibly well. I think they were the best in the league. I'm not entirely sure. But I think they were up there. So and they're, Miami's they're playing decent defensively. Cool in this next round? Miami and the Bucks are playing. So okay. the last last two round or the last two matchups in the East are the Bucks versus um, Miami. Okay, the Bucks. Oh no, you know what? I I well, the Bucks haven't made it yet. Uh, they were supposed to play True. Wednesday night. Uh, I think they were I'm playing game that. five or six, but they're up three games to one, and I, they're they're going to beat the Magic. The yeah. Magic were a decent, uh, you know, decent eighth. Uh, seeded team, but you know I think the, it's going to be the Bucks versus Miami, and I think Miami might take it. But you know, don't count out the Bucks too. The Bucks are huge; they're a big team. Yeah, they're really big, and that's that's going to hurt us. But I think you know we'll see. We will see. We'll just have to see on that. Um, before we wrap up our show, I did want to talk about as much as I. Oh yes, you, we do have to talk about the <laughs> your Red background. Sox. Yeah. Oh. I just well, I haven't really, honestly, man. You talk about people tuning out to sports. I just haven't. It hasn't been. Uh, I, Phil, I haven't. I, I'm done. I can't. I can't watch that dis disgrace on the field. I well, really I haven't can't. watched baseball at all, really. I've only seen like a couple things. Um, the reason that I want to talk about the Red Sox has uh, has to do with the trade deadline coming up. So the trade deadline is uh, this upcoming Monday, the 31st, and. I keep going back and forth on what I would do if I was uh, the GM for the Red Sox, if I was Heim Bloom. Resign? Uh, I Probably. Maybe, um, yeah. Actually, I feel bad for him, to be honest. I mean, but he also knew coming in that the ownership yeah. wanted him to do, you know, trade Mookie and all this kind of stuff. And, boy, has that come back and yeah. in the ass. It yeah, really cool. has. 
Yeah. Um, who do you think on the Red Sox is somebody that is super valuable and that should not be traded? Who would you not put on the trade but walk? Oh, uh, I mean, I guess I'd say Martinez, but you probably get the most for him. But either that or Devers, maybe? Or, uh, yeah, Devers, Bogarts. I got three keepers. I got three. So you I got, got JD. I got oh, JD. JD. Yeah. I got Bogarts. And I have Devers. Those are my three keeps. There you go. Everybody else? <laughs> yeah. I mean, Avaldi. Yeah. I mean, Avaldi, see you yeah. later. Who's going to take the, his contract? I can't get, still cannot believe that this guy got this much. He's got $18 million a year. He got like a 60 something million dollar deal. Yep. For losing, losing his game three start against the Dodgers. Losing. <laughs> Not taking it away what he came out and did out of the bullpen with pitching those amazing innings. And it wasn't his fault, to be honest. But, it was uh, not his fault. It was, but, oh, I who mean, was it? Come on. Yeah. Um, uh, no, but he had he had a great postseason, and I understand why they gave it to him. But even then, people were like, oh, this is a little too much because he it's had way injury, too much. Yeah, it's way injury too much. troubles his whole life or his whole career. So I would throw him out there. Um, another name, I know the Padres are very interested in Christian Vasquez, catcher. Oh, weird, really? So that's something that they need. Uh, the Padres are a very good team. I've gotten mm. a chance to watch a little bit of, a little bit of it because of um, my liking of Don Orsillo. He's a broadcaster that's for the right. Padres. So they've been uh, renamed, Phil. They are now called the Slam Diego Padres. Oh, Weird. Yeah, they hit four grand slams back to back to back to back nights. So we call wow. them Slam Diego. They're not oh, there you go, man. Slam Diego. And uh, Vasquez. They, they are interested in go. Vasquez. So that is one name. Um, what can we have, get? They have some of the better prospects in baseball. That's what, so yeah. I know the Red Sox want to rebuild their farm. They have next to nothing for pitching. So I think you should entertain offers for that. Here's my reason why I keep J.D. Martinez. I like J.D. Martinez a lot. Yeah. You already traded Mookie. Okay, that was one of your cornerstone guys. J.D. still has his option. He has two option years left of keeping or going, and he hasn't had that great of a year. A and lot of it a... has to do with um, they don't have the video room. So he oh, likes that's right. Down his, his bats and swings. That got taken time, away, right? And that's taken away. So I yeah. think that that's impacted him a lot, and mm -hmm. I don't think he's – He's stupid if he opts out of his, co his contract because yeah, he's it's guaranteed. guaranteed like $25 yeah. million a season. So it's looking like that's going to become a lock now. But I just – I think that you need to build around Martinez because his, his bat is still – one on, is vital to this team's success. Their lineup is still pretty good. Um, but those are the players that I personally would um, – pretty much not trade i mean devers hasn't had so, such a good year but he's only 20 years old remember 2021 yeah no he's so, uh he's, he's a very raw still so he has some things that he can work on and defensively he's done a lot better like a little bit a little bit i still don't think his position's third base no. um i think he'll be a dh or first base within the next couple of years well jd's not a spring boy. chicken either that's the thing no he's not no he's not so i think devers is gonna have to get a glove at first base soon the, the biggest bright spot on the year for the Red Sox has been Verdugo and Mitch Moreland. Mitch Moreland yeah. has just teared the cover off the ball, and he's on the cheap. So, I mean, if you can, if you can keep him and maybe have him as a platoon or whatever it is, uh, that might be a good thing. Um, Verdugo is another name that I think um, has a lot of value. I like his energy. I like what he brings to the table. He's not a Mookie Betts. But that's what you got for that, him. Um, he's somebody that I think the Red Sox are going to like. I, and I'm starting to like him as a fan uh, as I get a little bit more comfortable as this season has kind of come up. At least from what I've seen, he seems like he's he cares, he wants to be there, and that's great. There is one particular player that I would trade in a second any day of the week. And I would like JD, uh, I would like Jackie Bradley out of here as fast as possible. Now the years have not changed you. Oh, I just I'm done. I can't. Well, how's he been this year? As he, I thought oh, he started oh, okay. He had a good week, and then he's been <laughs> his normal miserable, yeah. fuck eighty hitter himself. Yeah. 
I took offense to an article that came out last night from NBC Sports Boston. And they put out an article that said, can the Red Sox not trade Jackie Bradley Jr. yet now, after all of this has happened? And that really, really kind of struck a nerve with me. What was their argument? They're arguing because of the color of his skin, they can't trade him. Oh, I see. Well, and, I mean, and you know what? I look at players on a pure value standpoint and production standpoint. If you can't hit, if you can't play, you're out. You're traded. Doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're Haitian, whatever the heck you are. Well, I mean, I mean, I mean, also, it's ridiculous. He's not the only black player on the team. No, uh, you know, you got Bogarts and Devers and uh, Orland as well. Perez, uh, some guys in the bullpen. It's ridiculous. Like these people love to stir the pot. And that last night just infuriated me seeing something like that. Oh, you really it are angry. To get a story, to get a charge. Well, they got a charge out of me. <laughs> sure did. They got a charge out of me. And my Twitter fans are all, all me and they want to dump this guy out of here. But anyway, I can't believe that that would even be something I, that somebody would want to, you know. Eh, I mean, I, I, can, I can see where they're getting, what they're getting at. But I mean, honestly, I mean, there's a difference. I mean, is Jackie Bradley Jr. that beloved? I think, I think getting no. rid of Mookie, I think Mookie is a separate thing. Because Mookie was, I mean, he was pretty beloved. He was MVP. Yes, he was. Mookie was, yes. And 100%. also he, pro he protected Andrew Benatendi, who hasn't been as good, correct? Uh, right. Benatendi's as hurt too, so he's not even oh. playing. Or it's just yeah. like, and JD, you can make the argument that JD doesn't have the protection because wasn't he, uh, Mookie was two? Yeah, or two or one. Or two or one, yeah. Ben Intendi was two and there's no protection with JD and Devers hasn't had yeah. such a great year. So it, it throws everything off. So It does throw everything I off. I just, I wouldn't say no to anybody on a trade. Blow yeah. me out of the water, even Bogarts. If somebody comes and says, well, I'm going to give you a first round pick and I'm going to give you this guy and that's equal value, maybe you do it. Is he on contract? Yeah. Like uh, JBJ? He said you signed that extension last year. I guess he yeah. got a five year. Um, oh. Uh, well, I mean, it's that's it's attractive to other teams um, then. He has a five year option or a five year deal on his contract. But okay. I wouldn't say no to really anything on the trade. So it should be interesting to see what the team actually does look like this time uh, next, next week. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah. I mean, do you think they'll blow it up? I do. I do. I think they're going to start and try to trade as much as they can. I just really hope that they do keep Bogarts, yeah. JD, Endeavors. Everybody yeah, else, other than that, bye. I mean, honestly, like it already was kind of a young team the last two years. So, I mean, I don't know. It's just very bizarre. They got a lot of work to do to get back. I think that the Red Sox have the hardest time right now getting back to winning another World Series. Out of all of our four teams, I think the Red Sox yeah. are going to have the toughest. I think then it's the Patriots. I think it's the, yeah, I was going to say, yeah. I think right now the highest chance is still the Bruins, even after yeah. that bad loss. No, I, I think they're there. I would say I, I, think, I think the Bruins might have a, uh, have a better shot. Um, the Seas, I think you have a three-year window right now. Yes, you do. Um, and I think they have a good chance of getting – like this shortened – like this bubble season, is, it's kind of interesting. I'm not going to lie. Well, yeah, no. Well, oh, those are my background dogs. dogs. Oh, that is your background. Who let the yeah. dog go? No. Um, that, is, um, that is also things that we would get a chance to see more and more as these uh, as professional seasons pick up whenever they do in these professional sports. So, uh, any final words, Phil, for the day? Uh, no, go Celtics and uh, Jalen Brown. Uh, I'm with you. And uh, I don't know. His game is, is great, and I love his leadership skills. But, yeah, I'll leave it to you. Now we're just going to uh, go, go to Bruins. You. Let's get a nice bounce-back victory Sunday night against uh, the Lightning and get right back to uh, winning ways. We need to win this series. Believe in the cup. Believe in the cup. you got to get back to that point. you got to get that cup, especially after last year. No letdown. No letdown. So that's my final words here on today's program. We will see you all next time on our next virtual episode, which will be amazingly episode 80, which we should be with you next week at some point. And I hope all of you have a great weekend. Enjoy your sports. Enjoy your family. Try not to get frustrated like I do about this world. 
And uh, we will see you next time for more on Face the Facts. Have a good one, everybody.